Hi, my name is Lillian O'Reilly. I'm the Vice President of Enrollment Management at Brooklyn College, and I'm delighted to be here with some of my colleagues to talk about how you could stay home and keep going this summer by taking summer courses with Brooklyn College. We have here today representatives from Admissions, Academic Advisement, Registrar, and Student Financial Services who are going to answer some of the questions that we often see regarding summer. Summer is a great opportunity to really either get ahead, to maintain your academic momentum, or just have fun with some of the great courses that we offer during the summer. So we're going to tell you how to do that and why you should do that. But I'd like to start by introducing some of our panelists. First, I'd like to introduce from the Registrar's Office, Julie and Vanessa. Hi, I'm Julie Hegner, and I am the Assistant Registrar in charge of Degree Audit. Hi, I'm Vanessa Ulov. I'm the Head of Scheduling in the Transcript Division. And I'd like to introduce our representative from Admissions, Nazarene. Hi, my name is Nazarene Charles, and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions. Hi, I'd like to introduce from the Center for Academic Advisement and Student Success, Claudine. Hi, everyone. My name is Claudine Marcantonio. I'm a senior academic advisor in the CAS office. Hi, and I'd like to introduce our representatives from Student Financial Services, Yasmin and Marcus. Hi, I'm Yasmin Ali, Executive Director of Student Financial Services. Hi, and I'm Marcus Richardson, Director of Financial Aid. Okay, so what we're going to do now is our panelists are ready to answer Again, the questions that we most frequently see that are often obstacles to students taking summer classes that don't have to be obstacles. So we're going to start um, by turning this over to Julie Hegna, the Assistant Registrar for Degree Audit, who's going to moderate the panel and the questions. Julie? Thanks, Lillian. Um, we've gotten questions from social media, but before that, we're going to give you some questions and answers that we get frequently on phone calls in our email inboxes. Um, so we're going to start with that. When does summer session one start? Summer session starts on June 1st. That is the most common question that we get. Okay, how can I see classes that are being offered? Vanessa, how about you take this? You can search for courses in CUNY first, use the global search, or use Schedule Builder. And that brings us to the next question that we get. What is Schedule Builder and how can you use Schedule Builder? Claudine, how about you? So Schedule Builder is a tool that's embedded in CUNY First, and it's a great feature that allows students to find classes based on their preferred days and times. And what it does is that it fetches those classes and provides students with variations of schedules they can use. It's a great tool to help students make the enrollment process and registration process much smoother. And there's a link to the Schedule Builder FAQ and tutorials in the description, so if you just scroll down to the bottom, you'll find it there. Um, how many credits can undergrad and graduate students take in the summer? Undergrad and grads can take eight credits per summer session. If you want to take more, you need to petition to do so. If you scroll down to the description, there's a link to information about the petition process. Cool. Now we're on to questions that we were asked via social media. Um, we're going to split this up into two sections. There's the registrar and advisement part of it, and then there's the student financial services part of it. Um, I am a prospective student for the fall semester, and I received my schedule, and I was wondering if I can change one of my classes to summer semester so I won't have to take it in the fall. Claudine, what do you think? Yes, yeah, so first year students are allowed to take summer classes, um, and what you can do is if you've already met with a, a, an advisor, you can reach out to the advisor and express interest in taking the summer and we'll be able to assist you in modifying your schedule so that, of course, that you're enrolled in for the fall, we can change that to the summer. If you have yet to actually meet with an academic advisor, when you do have that meeting, you could share with that advisor your interest in taking a summer class. And we can advise you appropriately on what you could take. So first year students definitely can take summer classes. Cool. This is a side note. If you're a grad student, um, because we don't know what level these questions are coming from, if they're undergrads or grads, if you're a grad student, you should reach out directly to your department for assistance with planning your schedule, to your program head or your department chair. Um, next question. I have to, I graduate in May, but I still want to take summer classes. However, I'm unable to add classes because I have to enroll as a non-degree student, but I can't give in the application and money order because nobody's on campus. How should I go about this? Because I really need these classes for grad school. <laughs> Vanessa, what do you think? 
The post-graduation request to continue enrollment form is available in BC Web Central under the e-services tab. It is a fillable form, so you just need to send it to registrar at brooklyn.cuny.edu and we'll take you through the process from there. The email is in the description if you scroll down. Awesome. I stopped attending for one semester. Now I want to take classes again, but I have a hold and can't add classes. I also want to change my major. How can I get rid of that hold and how can I change my major? I'm going to take that because I also oversee readmission um, and work closely with student records people. So it's going to vary depending on your situation. Most likely you're going to need to readmit to the college. So you can email readmission at brooklyn.cuny.edu. And again, that email address is going to be in the description below. To find out how to readmit. Um, I'm not sure what hold you have, but in CUNY First, you can check your service indicator and it will tell you who to contact to get it taken care of. It'll tell you if it's a bursar hold, if it's a financial aid hold, any of those type of things. Now for your major, you can declare it in the BC Web Central. Um, there is a queue in there under the e-services tab and you can declare it there. Just be aware that some departments require approval from the registrar, or from the department, sorry. Some, some departments require approval from them before we can input it. So if you declare one of those majors, you'll get an email letting you know that and telling you who to reach out to. All right, next question. My daughter is a prospective freshman for fall 2020. I have questions and need to speak to someone. I called and was transferred to a voicemail and no one returned my call. First of all, I'm sorry about that. A lot of us are working remotely and not all phones have been transferred over, although many of them have. Um, Claudine, how about you take that? Yeah, so if you are a parent of a new uh, first year student starting in the fall, you can direct your question to the first college of your office if you have any general questions. Um, if the question is very specific in terms of your um, daughter's academics, it's, it's best for the student to actually reach out to the advisor that they met with to do, pretty much reach, speak to them about that specific academic questions. Um, so if it's a very general question, you can reach out to the first college of your office. Right. How can, hi, how could I register for summer classes? That is a question we'd like to hear. Vanessa, <laughs> why don't you take that? You can do this via your student center. It's in CUNY First under the academics header. From there, you'll see a link to Schedule Builder that we were talking about earlier. You can add courses to there and find the different schedules that'll fit your needs better. Cool. Um, I applied for a theater major and I have gotten accepted, but now they are saying I was supposed to audition when I was never notified about auditioning. Yikes, I feel you. Um, I'm not sure if you were applying for the acting major, the BFA acting major, or just the BA in theater. Um, if you were trying to apply for the BA in theater, what I think happened was that you accidentally applied for the BFA in acting. Um, so you can change your major via the system we described above. Brooklyn College, Web Central, eServices, declare change of major. If you meant to apply for the BFA in acting, then I would say reach out to the theater department and they can help you with preparations for your audition. Good luck, break legs. Okay, for prospective students, will there be any virtual tours or virtual sessions? Nazarene, this is you all over. Yes, indeed. Um, so we're gonna have prospective student information sessions in May and June, and we are working, we are in the progress of working on virtual tours. Awesome, can't wait to see those. Um, we are going to have information about device requests because I know that that is a common question for a lot of you who weren't prepared to be working remotely. Neither was I. Look at my office space. Um, there will be information about that in the uh, description below. So when you scroll down, there will be a whole section on how to do uh, device requests. Also, if you have more advisement questions, there's information about that too. Um, our offices are working remotely but we are all working and we are all still reaching out so we're going to be able to give you the same amount of service that we could when we were on campus all right now for the finance side of the house um when is the last day that i could drop a summer class without having to pay any penalty fees who wants to take that one i'll take it julie okay um so it's really important um to focus on the first day of the actual session not the first day of your class. 
So for session one, the first date of session one is June 1st, um, and session two is July 13th. So if you drop your classes any time for session one before June 1st and before July 13th for session two, you will not incur any charges. Good to know, good to keep in mind. Um, on my CUNY first, I am not allowed to accept my work study awards and I don't know why. It only gives me the option to decline. What do I do? What do I do, Marcus? What does the well, student do? <laughs> federal work study is a great financial aid program. I actually began my career at Brooklyn College as a federal work study student. However, Brooklyn College only receives a limited amount of federal work study funds every year. You are currently not able to accept the award because we have already reached our maximum amount. Sorry about that. Good news is that not all students who currently have accepted their awards will use them. You can check back to see if you can accept the award later on, and we also communicate with students as we get closer to the beginning of the fall semester. Thanks. All right, I've committed to school a few days ago, and I just wanted to know a little more information about how to take out loans. Marcus, I think that's you again. Yeah, it is. The Office of Financial Aid has excellent federal direct student loan guides, and each admitted student at Brooklyn College is assigned a dedicated financial aid advisor to walk them through the aid process. Loans for the upcoming academic year, summer and fall 2020, and spring 2021 will be available to complete on our new online dynamic form submission process. That's available May 4th. The forms can be found at www.brooklyn.cuny.edu forward slash financial aid, and you can always scroll down. We'll have everything in the links in the description. Thanks. Ooh, another one. I'm supposed to pay my tuition and other fees on 7-15-20, July 15th, but I don't receive any financial aid until late December. How does that work, Marcus? That's a great question. Uh, even though financial aid funds will not begin dispersing until late August and September, the bursar's office can see any pending financial aid that eventually will disperse. And if that aid is enough to cover your balance, nothing will be due by your bill due date. However, do remember that if you've not filed your FAFSA or followed up on any outstanding financial aid items such as verification, it will prevent eligible awards from showing as pending financial aid. So please file and follow up today. Thanks. Do that, follow up. All right, I, if I take six credits over summer session one, do I receive Pell? And if yes, how much per class? So yes, and fi um, federal Pell grants vary from student to student. So how much depends on information provided on individual student FAFSA applications. The great news is that once you register for summer courses, any eligible summer Pell grants will be visible in CUNY First within 72 hours, and then you can plan accordingly. The Office of Financial Aid also has excellent Pell Grant FAQs on our website. Thanks. Um, this one is for Yasmin, I think. I paid for my summer semester prior to CUNY announcing classes would be fully online. Could I get a refund for, my, for student and technology fees I'm not able to use because everything is on campus? That's actually a great question. Um, the university actually determines those rules for us uh, for all of our campuses in the CUNY system. Um, they did allow for a 25% refund for the spring 2020 semester that the university is currently working on, um, adjusting for every student. Um, in terms of summer, we are still waiting to hear back, uh, but as soon as we do, we will definitely be in touch and hopefully have some great news for you there. Thank you. Kind of related. Will you reimburse students who paid for a parking pass? I paid for a parking pass to go to my night class, and now I won't be using that. Yes, I know some of our staff are also experiencing similar issues. Um, as you know, the, uh, the, you may not know actually, but parking is kind of governed by what we call our auxiliary enterprise corporation. Um, and that corporation has a board. So we are currently working on following up with the board um, to see what we are able to do for students and for staff. Um, so as soon as we get more information on that, we will communicate that out. Awesome, thank you. Uh, this is related to an earlier question, I think. I have registered for summer courses starting on June 6th, but my financial aid is set to disperse on July 20th. Can that aid be used for the courses I'm registered for? Absolutely. Um, as mentioned before, the Bursa's office can see any pending financial aid, and in this case for the summer. Um, 
they'll know exactly how much of your balance will be covered by eligible financial aid awards. Are you offering scholarships for international students? Um, yes, actually, uh, the Zicklin Summer Fellowship is an excellent opportunity um, to take advantage of scholarships available for you in the summer. Uh, we do so have the link uh, for that scholarship in the description box. Thanks. Financial aid is obviously a big concern for our students, Marcus. Uh, will financial aid cover summer classes, one or two classes? Uh, both. Um, you can enroll for fewer than six credits and still get a summer Pell Award, but you have to have a 2021 FAFSA on file and have ensured that any outstanding financial aid items, such as verification, has been completed. Again, the Office of Financial Aid has an excellent Pell FAQ on our website that provides even greater detail. Don't forget to scroll down. We have links to everything in the description. Okay, uh, last social media question. There's a student who contacted us who's trying to figure out how to leave a deposit for fall 2020. Nazarene, can you take this? Oh, sure. Um, so the student logged back into the CUNYFIRST account to the student center. They scroll down to admissions, click on view details. Once they click on view details, it prompts them to the accept offer button. They click on that. Once they click on that button, then it will prompt them to pay the commitment deposit if they are not waived. If they are waived, then it just closed them off. Well, so as you can see, there's a lot of ways that we have started making adjustments um, so that you can still get the awesome education you get at Brooklyn College and all of the services that we normally offer on campus, we're moving to remote. So don't worry. But now I'm gonna to toss it back to Lillian for a final word. Hi. Um, I hope our panelists answered some of your questions. And as Julie just said, we are here for you. The fact we're working remotely does not mean we're not here. We are here, we're present for you. Please scroll down to see how you could contact us and we will respond promptly. And you know, again, just remember, summer is a great opportunity for you. And you know, we hope that you, um, you take advantage of the opportunity. As Marcus pointed out, you know, financial aid often covers summer courses. And you know, we hope that you stay home and you keep going this summer. And again, stay safe and thank you. <laughs>